Allow me to introduce myself. I represent the PS5 Pro. It's too damn high party. What up? It's your boy Geronimo back again with another video. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is not the usual content I like to make, but after the recent PlayStation 5 Pro announcement and the technical breakdown, I had to hop on here and talk about it a bit more. I had to. I had to. You saw the audacity they tried to throw at me. $699.99 in US dollars. That is wild for a PlayStation 5 Pro. Does not include a vertical stand. That's separate. Doesn't include a disk drive at all. You gotta buy the one that came out with the PS5 Slim months ago. So what are we really doing here, Sony? What are we really doing? So I really want to come on here because I, I really think this entire pricing situation and just overall what they're trying to sell is is a bit outrageous. To be to be honest it's just outrageous like the three pillars are trying to fall on with this upgrade are a larger gpu sure that's about right that's what they did for the playstation 4 pro back in 2016 but the difference between then and now is i still feel very much so that the playstation 5 even four years into its own lifespan still has a lot of juice left still has got a lot of gas in the tank still got a lot of untapped potential did i think a lot of these developers or should i say publishers enforcing on developers to not be able to fully utilize it so while it does have a larger gpu you know buzzwords like 67 percent compute units 28 percent faster ram that's video ram since it's a GPU. Like, I don't think that really goes far for most people now. PlayStation 5 is a 4K capable machine, up to 120 frames if your display supports it with HDMI 2.0 or 2.1. I just am not convinced with that GPU improvement. We had a extended cross-generational period between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 titles with visual quality really looking the best that it could has ever looked. And yeah, sure, some of those games may have had their roots in the PlayStation 4 development cycle, like God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, titles such as that. It really still feels like this type of upgrade is unwarranted. And even at that higher price of $700. Now I know some people try and say, oh, oh but, it's go it's about right because the PlayStation 5 was 500 at launch. Yeah, the one with a disc was. For us who still get physical media and like to have options of our buying and selling of our purchases. So I really see there's a $300 increase from the original PlayStation 4 digital edition and even closer to the PlayStation 4, uh, I'm sorry, the PlayStation 5 Slim that's out which they made you or made us have to get a separate hard drive. I'm sorry, a separate disc drive if we want to use physical media. It's crazy out here, it's crazy. The second point they tried to push is advanced ray tracing. Now I need somebody in the comments who's watching this video, whether you're on a phone, on a computer, you might be watching on the TV. That might be a little harder because there's no keyboards for typing stuff out. But do you honestly think, do you honestly care about ray tracing? And if you do care about ray tracing, can you give me a practical example of a game where its gameplay has been enhanced by the ray tracing? I think we know what the answer will be. Ray tracing is, for those that don't know or find this video, is basically a technique to present better lighting with your visual presentation as in you know the the, the the puddle will reflect light better the windows on a tall high-rise building 
people reflect your appearance as you swing through like let's say as a spider-man even though you're swinging really fast you're not really going to notice that unless you pause and do photo mode it's really just another way of trying to upsell shinier shinier graphics shinier presentation which not much else being improved under the hood as far as the experience of playing the video game this is an interactive medium y'all i'm not saying our games should still look like games from 20 years ago in the sixth generation of gaming where we had you know dreamcast playstation 2 nintendo gamecube and xbox i'm not saying that as far as home consoles i'm just saying I feel like ray tracing as a whole just really just feels like another attempt for these companies, these console holders to just put buzzwords in upset as an attempt to show that it's some brand new revolutionary thing, which is really just different lighting. Like you can even go back and look at like a game like Metroid Prime for the GameCube that recently got a remaster, borderline a remake, on the Nintendo Switch, and it, it uses the traditional baked lighting techniques, but it looks gorgeous. You don't need no extra juice. You don't need no $300 upcharge for an even pricier console in this day and age. You don't need that. And the final thing that they tried to talk about, AI-driven upscaling. Or should we say the PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution or PSSR? Now, I want to preference by saying I am actually a fan of AI upscaling. It feels like free resolution, free frame rate boost, and can make a lower resolution image, quadruple the amount of pixels, a sharper image, without needing to really have to upgrade your internals for that. And it's an amazing technology that has been developed. However, with a console still as capable as a PlayStation 5, which I still think again, has not really tapped everything that can be done as far as, you know, higher resolution, high frame rate, very interactive, enjoyable, enjoyable experiences that may not have been possible on the PlayStation 4 before that one. So with this upscaling, it could be used as a band-aid for certain games that, you know, does have a good visual identity, but the frame rate may not be where they want it to be. Frame rate is inconsistent. For, for, our, for our true tech nerds that watch Digital Foundry, the frame pacing isn't as consistent. So while it may seem like 30 frames, the rate of it being shown to you on the display isn't as consistent as you want it to be. Now, not everyone can really notice the frame pace. But we're getting kind of lost in the woods here. I don't want to be there too long. Let's come back out. Open. Um, now, what they're trying to say for the AI-driven upscaling here, or at least what Mark Cerny said in the, uh, the technical presentation uh, from September 10th, 2024. Uh, they want to be able to allow developers to bridge the gap of the fidelity mode and performance mode. We've seen this generation alone that most people prefer the performance mode because higher frame rates, higher frame rates with a lower resolution is generally king. Um, quality mode, I mean, fidelity mode is fine too. It's really for folks that just want the most visual real estate, with, you know, or may not even care so much about frame rates or might not even notice the difference between 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. And for some games, that is just fine, honestly. But what they tried to show us here didn't really, really wasn't that convincing, y'all. I like, wasn't really that convincing. And I'm sure PlayStation and MR noticing this reaction. It's not, it's not a convincing improvement. Now, I'm sure this console will boost up certain games on a case-by-case -case basis and make it more attractive. But to the average consumer walking in the store, you know, with little Timmy and, and little Tammy, they say, oh, we want the new PlayStation 5. Mommy, we want the new PlayStation 5. Mama says, not for $700 in this economy? Wild. 
<laughs> Absolutely wild. Now, I do have a thought about this, too. And I don't want to make this too long. Uh, but it had me thinking. At least from the first party front for PlayStation, it's really been quieter the past few years. What we've been mostly getting is, you know, unfortunately Naughty Dog was kind of in the live service minds. They kind of just pulled themselves out and just said, this is going to work. And unfortunately with that, we've missed out on new, fresh experiences from them. We've seen a, we've seen a, a, a remaster of The Last of Us remaster. And you just called it The Last of Us Part 1. I still feel that's a bit unnecessary as well, but I get it, you know. They have the show out on um, on HBO Max or, or Max. Very good show, by the way. I highly recommend watching it, especially if you enjoyed the first one. And they're about to release the second season, which should fall alongside with The Last of Us 2. But then we saw Last of Us 2 remastered, which literally came out four years or almost four years after the original release on PlayStation 4. That game came out in 2020. The year that we don't want really want to remember, I know. But time don't lie. So yeah, that's pretty much how it is then. Uh God of War Ragnarok, cross gen game. Horizon Forbidden West uh, cross-gen game outside of the two DLCs they both had. Those are PlayStation 5 exclusives. But since then, really, Gran Turismo 7, which has its own issues that's not really related to technical aspects. Uh, but other than that, there really hasn't been too many big titles come out, and the, and the cadence has slowed down. Now, fortunately, they can rely on their third-party partners to, you know, partner and, you know, get more games out of this, but... What's to say they kind of start getting lax on optimizing the game for the base PlayStation 5 hardware? It was a concern during the PlayStation 4 generation with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Although I don't think it was quite as rough back then. It's a really interesting time, y'all. It's, it's, it's a really interesting time in gaming. Uh, PlayStation is kind of, they let their hubris take advantage yet again. Or add another PlayStation 3 juncture, you know. 599 US dollars from E3. So expensive, you may need to get a second job and work more hours. I know some of y'all remember. I know some of y'all know. If you don't, go look up Sony's E3 2006. Come back. Comment what you think. Overall, I just... This is... <laughs> I laughed so much earlier at how this price was, was framed. And it's, it's gonna be rough for even people outside the United States. I'm just talking about the United States price. I'm not, I'm not even talking about Europe or South America or even Japan. PlayStation and Sony's original homeland, which they seem to have kind of abandoned and just focused wholeheartedly on the West and some other Asian markets. You know, they've, cat they've, they've catered and formed uh, working relationships and cultivated studios like Shift Up with Stellar Blade earlier this year, uh, Game Science, Black Myth Wukong, the game people thought was real, and yet they just made it, and they got it on the console, so that's great for them, but I just had to make a video and kind of voice my opinion on the whole thing, to, to bring it back and to summarize, PlayStation 5 Pro, what are we doing, Sony? What are we doing, bro? Looking like Apple with the price gouging. Selling all the accessories separate. Actually crazy behavior right now. Actually crazy. Well, thank you all for watching the video. Um, if you have any, uh, if you really like this content or like, you know, this type of style of me doing, I don't really do this much. Uh, but I might start voicing my opinion on other gaming topics or things that occur. Let me know in the comments. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Thumbs down if you disliked it. Subscribe for more. We do unboxings here. We do some edited video gameplay. We're about to kick up with the Monster Hunter content again. Stick around and enjoy. But this has been Geronimo. I appreciate your time. You have a great day, night, wherever you may be. Peace out.